Nice, you clicked on this video most likely because you either strongly agree or disagree with this statement. You're not a real watch enthusiast if you own this watch or watches like it. And normally I would address this issue at the end of the video, after the review and showing you some tasty B-roll footage, but in this video I want to say this first. If you own a luxury watch, any luxury watch, I just want you to understand that you are extremely privileged and blessed to be able to own something so highly desired. And whether by hard work or sheer luck of simple inheritance, the vast majority of people, myself included, are not likely to be in a position to own a Patek or a Vacheron Constantine or a Langa and so on and so forth. Now, I also must say, if you own multiple homage watches, chances are you actually can afford to save up and trade up to a point where you can get a luxury watch, perhaps even your grail watch. I did it, many YouTubers I am friends with have done it, and the crazy thing is, we all sat in the same seat, walked in the same shoes that many of you are doing now or will do in the future. Now these might be terrible examples and maybe you have a better one you can leave in the comments, but you don't have to be a professional athlete to be a sports enthusiast. You don't have to be a race car driver to be an exotic car enthusiast, and you don't have to own hot horology pieces to be a watch enthusiast. In fact, I would argue that there are many people that own these very iconic watches that are not themselves watch enthusiasts, as all it takes to be able to own those pieces is by simply having enough money. This watch is an homage watch, and it's nothing amazing and it's nowhere near the quality and craftsmanship when compared to a real Patek Philippe Aquanaut. This brand lacks any provenance and horological significance, but it looks like an Aquanaut, and that is the point. That is the elephant in the room. We love many designs of various iconic pieces, but perhaps we're not able or willing to spend the money for that piece. And here is where the homages fill the demand in the marketplace. As the cubic zirconia is to the diamond, so are our beloved homage watches to the luxury watch lineup. And that's okay. So let's get into the Spect Unson Aquanaut watch. Now case dimensions on this are going to be a bit larger with a case width of just under 42 millimeters, lug to lug height of just under 48 millimeters, case thickness with the flat mineral glass crystal is just at 11 millimeters, and the lug width is 21 millimeters, which does taper down to 18 millimeters at the clasp, which we can look at next. The clasp is a double deployant butterfly clasp with a built-in twin trigger release mechanism that is a direct copy of the Patek clasp design. And while the finishing on the clasp is not great, with rough inner edges and gaps in the fitment, it does give a surprising feel with regard to the thickness of the steel used and the hinges don't have as much play as I've seen in many Submariner homage clasps, for example. There's branding etched into the clasp and on the buckle itself. Now the strap comes in an extended length that requires you to cut the rubber in order to size it to fit your wrist, much like that of the real Aquanaut. And this experience can be rather stressful, as you can always make the strap shorter, but you cannot make it longer once it's been cut. And the other downside to this is that if you should decide to give the watch away or sell it later, the next owner will need to have a wrist that is the same size as you or smaller. The rubber strap also had a very strong chemical smell to it when I first unboxed this watch, and I must admit it was really off-putting. The rubber seems like a simple silicon blend as dust and hair will stick to it fairly easily and it would have been nice to see this strap made from an FKM rubber for better resistance to dust and such. One really cool and surprising feature is these metal nubs that fit directly into these recessed holes of the case. And I don't know if this is something similar on the Patek, so if you can confirm this is a feature of the Aquanaut, please leave a comment down below. This is a really nice feature as it helps prevent the strap from being pulled away from the case, which would create a gap. And the rubber has a nice flex to it, and you can see where the spring bar rests on the underside, which is where the strap is attached to the clasp end. It's sturdy enough, and I did not experience any issues with the strap. Now, it would have been nice to have better venting on the strap, as I did notice quite a bit of moisture when sweating with the strap on, which was actually quite a bit annoying. Overall execution of the Aquanaut design has been done really well, the case features the same satin finishing on the sides, transitioning into polished lugs. There's the subtle rounded octagonal shape with a flat satin finish bezel with high polished edges. The watch has a unsigned screw down crown with coin edge and the flat mineral glass crystal rests on the edge of the Rayhot, showing just a sliver of depth when the light bounces off the edge. Legibility of this watch is really excellent. 
with the white applied Arabic numerals, wide baton shaped hands, and white needle second hand give an easy read of the time at a quick glance. Date Wheel at 3 o'clock has a smaller font size, but I do have to say I was impressed that the font is fairly crisp at this price point. Loom is applied to the hour and minute hands as well as on each of the Arabic numerals and each hour marker, but the loom fades really quickly, which is really disappointing. The loom is also inconsistent, with fading of some numbers occurring faster than the rest. Also, the application of the loom is done poorly, which you wouldn't probably notice unless getting up close with a loop or macro lens. This is also the case with the printed minute and hour markers along the chapter ring. From a distance, they look fine, but up close, you can see there is definitely room for improvement. The watch is powered by an automatic Miyota movement, which I had initially assumed was a standard caliber 8215, but this watch has hacking of the seconds hand, so I'm thinking it's actually powered by the Miyota caliber 8315, which is nice to have that hacking feature and has a better power reserve compared to the 8215. The rotor I noticed is not as noisy as some of the other Miyota movements that I've had experience with. There's a screw down crown, which we'll come back to in a bit, but in position two, movement of the hands feels good and date change starts at around 10.45 p.m. and clicks over just before midnight. The movement does have quick set date changing, which is expected, but I did notice the date wheel is just a bit off center with this date window. Another disappointment with this particular watch is that this movement has poor accuracy, beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour with a beat error of 0.6 and is running at around minus 14 to minus 20 seconds per day with an average amplitude of around 263, meaning you'll have to adjust the time about once every four to seven days. Call me spoiled from better movements, but adjusting the time once a week is not ideal nor preferred by any means. Hopefully other watches from this brand will have better accuracy than what I experience. And if you have personal experience with a better accuracy on your spec and son, please drop a comment down below. They did a really decent job with trying to hide the thickness of this piece. When it's on the wrist, it actually wears a lot thinner than the measurements would suggest. And I like that a lot. The clasp is sturdy and did not come unbuckled when on the wrist. I had high hopes to see that screw down crown, but unfortunately realizing that there's only 50 meters of water resistance, it falls short of what I like to see at this price point, and it is one of my biggest gripes with sports or dive watches. I personally want a minimum 100 meters of water resistance so I can hop into a pool, go to the beach, not have to worry about babying this watch. Case finishing is also surprisingly good. Dial color with that gradient fume effect and dial texture was done well, but the date wheel alignment, the poor loom, shows where there's inconsistencies with the effort put into the small details. Overall, I think the watch is an okay value for the money. With these going for about $118 on Amazon here in the States and around $65 on AliExpress, links down in the description, if you want that Aquanaut look with the full experience of cutting your strap to the exact wrist size and don't mind taking the watch off before doing water activities, I do think it's a great looking homage from a distance. I don't think many people out in the wild are going to recognize this for the Patek that it mimics, and I doubt they would try to rob it off your wrist, but if they do, you know what's up. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed a look at this watch by Spect Unson. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments, and please hit that share button and copy the link. That really helps out my channel getting out there for others to see, and I really appreciate it. I hope to see you all at the next one. We're actually going to be taking a look at the Perrin watch that's on loan, so that I'm really excited for. And as always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.